So my dad was a very, very poor soccer player, but he loved the sport. Growing up in the south of Sweden, passion for soccer came as second nature. It was a wonderful opportunity for the two of us to bond. And then I think you have a lot of friends in the neighborhood. Every opportunity we got, we were outside playing. But when Johan Settergren arrived in the States in 1997 to play collegiately for Cincinnati, he says he went through withdrawals. There were no games on TV. You could not, there was nothing on. There was simply no appetite for it. So I grew up in Eastern Kentucky back in the 70s. People didn't talk soccer. We made the NCAA tournament at 98. There maybe were 200 people on average at our games. Now with uh, more you know, social media coverage, uh, streaming services, it's a lot more accessible than it used to be. Rick Roberts is a fan of German giants Bayern Munich. They've created a group called FC Bayern Kentucky. Now 150 supporters strong. Some come from uh, Bowling Green, from Louisville. Separated by thousands of miles from the club they cheer on, they still come together to watch on the big screen. They open early for us to come in for breakfast and uh, watch the early games. They share their shamrock home with several other supporter groups like Everton, Kentucky. Everybody was trying to deal with the pandemic and it was something that we could all kind of get behind. Started just last season, Everton, Kentucky has grown to include more than 80 footy fans. One string in a worldwide web of supporters. Everton has supporters groups all over the world from Australia to China to North America. Across town at Mirror Twin, the American Outlaws Lexington chapter provides a similar outlet for fans of the Stars and Stripes. We had a a weeknight crowd of somewhere between 30 and 40 people. But board member Kevin Collins and other fans say watching a game on TV pales in comparison to seeing one in person. It's unlike anything I've seen as far as the passion. Constant noise, constant action, drums beating. Settergren has seen that passion growing within his own big blue fan base over the years. You know, there's a ball when we beat IU in 2018. I think that's when we had 3,300 people here. Thousands turn up for a night under the lights at the Wendell and Vicki Bell soccer complex. He attributes it in part to more parents growing up with the game and passing it down to their children, just as his father did for him. It's made fans more knowledgeable, Good. and it's led to growth in the domestic market. When I got here in December of 2011, Columbus Crew was the only MLS franchise close to us. And now, of course, you have Columbus, you have Cincinnati, you have Nashville, Louisville City does a great job in the USL. Soon, Lexington will have its own pro soccer team. Settergren is excited by the prospect, as it could create a pipeline for fans to keep watching his players. Fans make connections with college players, and then all of a sudden there's, an, there's another venue where they can keep watching them. And to keep nurturing their interest, in the beautiful game. There may, be, there may only be one, two, three goals a game, but those moments, they feel unreal. Euphoric moments from grassroots levels up to the pros that can be made right here on the bluegrass. In Lexington, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. We've already seen European soccer action right here on WKYT, and this week the Champions League returns with more rounds of 16 matchups. Tune in tomorrow as the defending champions Chelsea host French foes Lille in London at 3 p.m. and Wednesday at 3 when Manchester United take on Spanish side Atletico Madrid. I feel like I have a lot to learn, Garrett. Yeah, but you're doing really well with those pronunciations. Well,